Trump's up. <laughs> that was that was perfectly timed. Oh, was well, it? <laughs> Say hi, everybody. Hi on YouTube. We're getting going on Facebook here today, too. Where's Facebook? Dark? Oh, there it is. Hi, everybody. There it is. All right. <laughs> Good to see you. I've got live my from fan. Lockdown. We're live from lockdown. I'm Champion. This is Steven. And today on our weekly show, we're celebrating Dine in Washington. As you guys tune in, please say hi and uh, tell me where you're watching from because we really like to keep track of the countries. Um, I live streamed yesterday from Shanghai Jazz. It was sort of last minute, so I'm sorry I didn't give you guys a heads up. Um, but it was pretty cool. We had tons of different countries on the live stream. Oh, Suzanne, hi. As you guys tune in, please say um, say something so I can see you. Oh, Suzanne's come out of hiding. Hi, Gilead. Nice to see you. Oh, he got a copy of Birdsong. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. Uh -huh. Hi, Terry in Chicago. John. Good to see you guys. How's everybody holding up? It's um, Adam and Chris in Georgia. Oh, hi, nice to see y'all. Daniel in Barcelona, good to see you. Um, hi, Dave in Holland, nice to see you too. Um, I hope everybody's having a good weekend. It's really hot. Um, we totally played outside last night in New Jersey and it was really fun. It was so great to see the band again and to play with them, uh, and, but it was really hot. Super hot. It was, <laughs> and it was so humid, that was the bad thing. Oh, Laura, we're sad we missed you too. Um, so we played at Shanghai Jazz in Madison, New Jersey, and it's outside. And if you haven't been there, it's in the back. So it's like in the parking lot in the back, and Tom, the owner, has done a really nice job. He's really cleaned it up. Um, I mean, because it's a parking lot, but now it's actually really very nice space to sit. There's tents and lights, and furniture. It's really cool. Wow, really and, nice. um, and a new menu was totally um, full because it's the tables are socially distanced, so it really was full, but but spread out. Um, I see a lot of people on here. Hi, Avi and Paul, Kathy, Rodney. Oh, I'm so sorry that your Facebook account was hacked. That's terrible. Hi, Greg. Thank you. Hi, Andrea. Alex is in Germany. Nice to see you. I'm going to scroll back a little bit. I think I saw Pierre's on there and Tim, Greg, Malcolm. Did Malcolm, did you say hi from Pluto? Like the, like the, the, oh, the planet. The planet. <laughs> That's cool. I love to think, um, I love to see how far our shows reach every week. Hi, Joyce. Thank you so much. It was really fun. It was great. Um, I haven't seen Hide or Fuku basically since Lockdown. February. Um, so we, we played together and I got to test out my microphones with the whole band. And, oh, hi, Bill. Bill's on YouTube. We're glad you're there. All right. Bertram's there. Oh, hi, Mike and Janie. Good to see you. Um, oh, wow, Emil in Sweden. That's Sweden. so cool. Nice Sweden. to see you. It must be really hot in Sweden. Um, so it was, it was great to see the band and great to play together and just sort of like have that normalcy of um, a, a gig, like a normal gig uh, with people. I got to see people re like respond. Yeah, and you know what? It was great because so many of those people were fans that found you from live from lockdown. That's right. From these shows. My face gets really funny with the fan. It's my fan. Uh, I needed this fan last night, but I didn't have it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so true. I want to say... Um, we had a big milestone today, or not today, but this week on Facebook. And, uh, oh, Vonette's in Trinidad. That's so cool. Um, the big milestone is 15,000 Facebook likes. So it's 15,000. A little, actually, it's like 15,000, almost 200 right now um, of y'all because y'all are so cool and because you share this video and because you share a lot of my stuff. And it's really amazing to see those numbers just go up during um, this lockdown. So, hi Magda in Barcelona. Thanks, Malcolm. Um, <laughs> oh, hi Adriana in Boston. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys are just tuning in, if it's your first time, we're gonna play some music, talk about Dinah Washington today. Um, please share the video with your friends and if you see the little notification box that says notify you when I go live, please click that. Um, I go live every Sunday and sometimes another time during the week. Uh, we broadcast last night from Shanghai Jazz because the circumstances were just sort of perfect and it worked. 
um, but it's not always, we're not always sure if it's going to work out. Um, but today we're talking about my absolute favorite, the great Dinah Washington. We're going to talk about her. We're going to play some songs. You guys can tell me, I don't know, it, she recorded so many things, so if you make a request, I don't know if I'll know it. Um, but talk to me about Dinah Washington and let's get started. We're going to get started with That Old Feel. solo piano so like both hands and the pedals of uh, my feet so I have I have no way to oh it got me really good did it bite you yes oh my god <laughs> thank you so much to everybody that's a lover and uh, no, that was um what was the name of the song that old feeling that old feeling of getting bit by the mosquito the mosquito got me let's show a picture of Donna um 
Oh, yeah. So Gilead's talking about the Bessie Smith record, and there's a wonderful uh, oh, video of her singing Send Me to the Electric Chair, uh, which I, I don't sing, but I should. Um, let's. You want to see a photo of that? Yeah, yeah, show a picture of Why it. Why don't you tell us her birthday first, and then I'll tell you. She was born, her real name is Ruth Jones. That's right. Born in Alabama. Mm-hmm. And Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm guessing now. Okay, guessing. Guess away. 19... I'm going to pull the book down. 17? Oh, heavens to Betsy, no. No? How? When? Okay, so this is interesting. Um, her birthday's Bird's birthday. Yeah. August 29th, same as Charlie Parker. Uh, but she's born in 1924. Oh, yeah. She's a little, she's a little bit younger than, uh, than Bird, a little bit younger than Clark. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Oh, hi, Yvonne. Hi, Jan. Hi, Terrence. Good to see you guys. We're talking about Dinah Washington. So she was born in 24 in Alabama, although she basically grew up in the south side of Chicago. She moved there when she was a little girl. I have a lot of photos to share with you guys today. This is, of course, from the massive William Claxton Jazz Life book that um, I love, but it's super hard to hold up. And this is her in Hollywood. I think you can really see her personality in both shots here. Oh, my gosh. I'll get a little bit closer. That's good. Oh, that's right. It's Suzanne's birthday, too. August 29th. Oh, really? Just like Bird and Dinah. So I think the thing about um, Dinah that I love is that she's really, you know, she has this huge voice with so much personality, and then she has also so much personality um, just in her whole person. Like, if you see photos, and there is some video footage, um, she's very glamorous. And she loves to dress up and sort of uh, make faces, sort of like Fats Waller. Sort of like you. And I hope like me. <laughs> I love this book. Um, this is a great photo book, this William Claxton. I show you guys this a lot. And there's a couple pictures in there that I would like to um, have on the wall. Oh, hi, Danae in Oklahoma. Thanks, Leslie. Um, hi, thank you, Ed. Yes, it's a heavy book. I'm, uh, I'm working out. Oh, and Leslie is making dinner. That's good. Invite me over. I'll be hungry. And we're going, oh, hey, Marion and Bill. We are going to um, continue. I know everybody wants to hear her hit. Uh, she had quite a few hits, but perhaps most famously known for What a Difference a Day Made. So we should just, we should do it. Hi, Monty and Laura. What a difference a day made. Oh, man. 
<laughs> what a difference a day made. There's a rainbow before me. recording of Dinah singing that song, which is the famous recording, um, but there's also a fantastic Live at Birdland, uh, sort of, I guess it's a bootleg, uh, but it's available, well, I have it on CD, that old archaic technology, I don't know if it's on Spotify, uh, but where she sings that, it's a great version, and it's interesting because they recorded her whole week at Birdland, and it's released, uh, and when she would play at Birdland, so many of her fans would come that she wanted to hang out with and talk with that she would spend most of her set in the audience just hanging out. And then she would sort of go up to the stage for maybe 20 minutes or half the show. And so she would have to do all of her hits in a long medley. Medleys. Yeah. And so she would do What a Difference a Day Made, and then they would hit the chord and... And the difference is I took a trip you know, and she, it, it's great, and I really love um, hearing that live record, and I love the fact that she was such a star that the people just wanted to hang out with her at the gig more than hear her play, so she would just go do, you know, a few 15, 20 minutes, and then just go back into the audience and, and hang out. That's really how I would like my gigs to be. That was the old Birdland, right? <laughs> That's the old Birdland, on, in the 50s. On, on Broadway. On Broadway. It's, um... <clears throat> I think the bootlegs are from 55 or 56, and um, yeah, that was on Broadway. It's now... Flash Dancers. Strip Club. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's still there, and that is uh, really a, a special recording. And Joe Zawinul is on piano. I don't know if, if you know, if you're a big jazz fan, um, Dinah had tons of super famous and super great sidemen. Wynton Kelly played for her. Uh, Jimmy Cobb, the great drummer, played for her. He was also her husband. Um, she had Keeter Betts on bass for many years. She had Joe Zawinul for many years before Weather Report, obviously, <laughs> even and before Cannonball. So other musicians like Cannonball or Miles, they would poach her sidemen, which I think is really rare. Now you know why, right? Why they would poach them? No, why did she have all these great musicians all the time? Because she paid them a lot of money. No, no, no. Well, she, but she did. No, you're wrong again. I'm wrong. Okay, well, I don't know what the no, right answer is. No, of course she did. She, because Dinah was, as the, even though she was a superstar singer, big diva, you know, famous girl, she was also a favorite of musicians. Yeah. All the musicians loved her, and she, she comported herself in the jazz community as one of the jazz musicians. And Which they, means she was a good hang. She was a good hang. She hung out. She was. She was a tough cookie. Right. She was. All the guys liked tough her. I, I hear that. I heard that firsthand from Clark Terry. Tell. Do you want to talk about that story right now? Oh, her little. We have. I never met Dinah um, neither, because neither did she I. passed away in, I believe, '63, and uh, and uh, yeah, you didn't either. Well, but we know Clark, and Clark knew Dinah, and we have a story. Yeah, one of the one of the stories, Clark used to tell, and I, he told me whenever I once asked him about the famous recording that he did with Dinah with the three great trumpet players, Clifford Brown, Maynard Ferguson, Clark Terry, 
And it's a live, it's, it's an in-studio, but live with audience. Right, with Max Roach on drums and... Junior Mance. Peter Betts, and it was a famous all-star thing. It was Dinah's <laughs> set, it was called Dinah Jams, right? Released on Mercury as Dinah Jams. Yeah, and uh, anyway, Clark would tell the story, he said he was with Ellington at the time, and, and one of the very interesting things about Ellington is they traveled by railroad cars. Ellington had his own railroad cars. <laughs> And so That's they would cool. travel around the country in their railroad cars. When they would get to the town, they would park on a off track at the station, and they would take cabs and buses into town and wherever they were working. So they were in this particular town. I forget where it was recorded. Was it in Hollywood? Yeah, or? it's in the west. It's west coast. Anyway, they the Ellington band arrived into town, uh, and <laughs> Clark got his stuff and a bunch of the guys, of course, and he got them on a bus that was running from the train to the hotel. Well, so happens the hotel is where she was staying. Yeah, because often all the jazz musicians would stay in the same hotel. Right. Also because they were they were black. Yeah, all the it's black, black musicians would stay in the same place. Yeah. So he says he gets off the bus at the hotel, and he said, there's Dinah hanging out from her <laughs> second floor Leaning window. Leaning out the window. And she starts talking to him, you know, teasing him, and... They had a little back and forth. They were very good friends. And uh, he said, well, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. And she says, I'm here to make a record, and you're on it. <laughs> and he was like, what? What are you talking about? And it was that famous record. He didn't even know he was on it until right. he got to town. And he said she yelled it to him across the, from the parking lot of the hotel. And uh, he was very excited about that because Clark was very excited about recording with Clifford Brown and Maynard oh, Ferguson yeah. and... All those guys, he, he he idolized young Clifford Brown and was a big fan of Maynard, so he was very glad to be included in that trumpet all-star recording. And it's a great record if any of you haven't heard it. And I, I wanted, I'll talk a little bit more about Dinah in the studio. She was sort of famous in the studio. Um, but let's play a song before, okay. we, before we talk more. This is uh, written by Fats Waller. One of my favorite records of hers is Sings Fats Waller Songbook. And she had a huge hit. Actually, one of her first hits was on Ain't Misbehaving. But we're going to do... Don't even go to the movie shows If you're not by my side I stay home by my radio And I'm satisfied All my flirting days are gone Yeah. On a level from now on are my best company. All my opinions have changed somehow. Old fashioned as can be. When you really learn to care, there's a thrill in solitaire. Keep it out of mischief now. Really am in love and
there is a really um, fan. I mean, the Dinah Washington version is beautiful. That whole record is beautiful, but the original Fats Waller single of that tune is super fantastic. I see a lot of people um, asking about my mother. My mother is um, just over here. She's my producer, and I know a lot of people missed her last night at Shanghai Jazz. She's always here with us. She's extremely camera shy, but a lot of family is watching right now, and I wonder if she would come and say oh, hello. Yay. Maybe if we make applause. Mr. Producer. Mrs. This producer. Is my, yeah, Mrs. So, well, this is my Mrs. mom. Mrs. Producer. Susan, no, go, come get Stay closer. Where are you, there what you, are you go. doing? Closer. No, here, baby. In the camera. Right here. Right where I am. Get in front of me. We yeah. didn't plan this slapstick routine, hi, but hi, it's, hi. it's working out. Uh, hi, Mom. She wants to see me, so I'm here, and everyone else, it's great to see you all. Thanks for tuning in and watching Champion and Steven every <laughs> Sunday. It's great. And I love listing, listing all the countries, so <laughs> that's my role. They love it. They're saying hi to you. Now, how, how old is your mom? Yeah, my, my grandmother's watching. Um, a lot of my aunts and uncles are watching right now. Susan's and my, mom. my grandmother, Josephine, is 95. 95 years old. And she's watching. And not sure if my brother is watching, your uncle. My John. uncle Johnny. Yeah, so I know, you know, a lot of people are still um, being affected by COVID. And even though some states are opening up, we're still in lockdown here in New York. And uh, we actually have my uncle Johnny, my mom's brother. He's in the hospital in Texas with COVID, so. In Arkansas. It, I know a lot of, oh, I'm sorry, in Arkansas. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I, I know a lot of people are still sort of dealing with that, so we're thinking of you guys and thinking of Uncle Johnny, of course. Do you want to say anything else? Tell us a joke. Feel bad. <laughs> She's really camera I'm not shy, very you guys. Funny. It's a big I'm deal. Not very funny. It's a no, no. big deal. <laughs> Oh, Laura's mom says hi to you. Oh, hi. Everybody's hi, saying yes. hi to you. Yeah. She's she's older than ninety five, right? That's true. Laura's mom. Laura, was... how old is your mother? Dave says, "Can you catch the mosquito, please?" I never saw it. You know what? I can put some. No, 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 no. I killed the mosquito. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's okay. But we're gonna we're Bye, gonna talk. Buddy. <laughs> Bye. We're gonna talk about. So you guys. Y'all need to do a song. It's a family. It's a family uh, show here. <laughs> So I was going to say that Dinah is super famous for her, here's some traffic for you guys, um, super famous for her time um, the in the studio. Oh, before I go on, Greg says, are you sure she isn't your sister? Uh -huh. That's quite nice. And Donna wants to know if my mother is still working. Everybody's asking if you're still yeah. working, and my mother is still working. She goes to work. Donna will um, be at Presbyterian. Oh, okay, yeah. Mom is going to work. Um, you know, Monday through Friday, sometimes on the weekends as well. Oh. Um, but she's here with us on Sunday at New York Presbyterian. Wow, there's, who's honking out there? Traffic on. Dinah Washington. This is a great photo. This is a fantastic book um, by Milt Hinton. It's his first book, Baseline. There's two. This is really nice. It has amazing photos in it. Uh, Milt Hinton was a very famous jazz bass player. And, um, and photographer. And photographer as his hobby, but they're really great. And I love this photo of Dinah. This is right in the last year of her life, 1963. And um, in the studio there, I don't know if you can see the attitude she is serving up right there. That's a lot of attitude. And um, I fell in love with Dinah when I was a little girl. She's my favorite singer from when I was like five years old. And uh, I think we've seen that stance in the studio before. Oh, yes. I've, I've modeled that stance. Maybe not that hat. I need the hat. Um, but I, that's a great, if you guys don't have this book, this is a fantastic book. And that's Jimmy Rushing on the front. Um, it's so sweet of you guys to say that I know a lot of songs because it doesn't actually often feel like that. <laughs> but um, what, was, what were we going to play? You didn't say. This is from my favorite Dinah Washington record of all time, which is? Those in Love. For Those in Love on Mercury, originally on Emercy Records. Clark Terry is on this. Wenton Kelly, Jimmy Cobb, Keeter Betts, Paul Quinache, Jimmy Cleveland, Clark, and um, this is a guitar. There's a guitar. Who's the guitarist? The guitarist from Oklahoma? Barney Kessel. Barney Kessel. One day I can give you guys a tour of our jazz library. Honestly, I need a new bookshelf. It's crowded. This can't be love because I feel so well. No sobs, no sorrows, no sighs. This can't be love because I get no dizzy spells. My head is not in the skies. My heart does not stand still. Just hear it beat. <laughs> Oh, 
record it's my favorite record and <laughs> I'm in Manhattan y'all can tell the riot going on um, <laughs> no don't, not really no, no, not, not really not a riot. Um, we had that though uh, not up here um, but um, was gonna say that I was uh, a little girl I discovered this record maybe I was like eight years old and I would sing all of these songs and I had a discman and I would wear the headphones and I would sing all of these songs. And at that time, we were around Clark Terry a lot. And Clark thought that was very amusing. Yes. Because um, I learned not only the songs, but I learned everyone's solo. And if you listen to that record, oh, Lorenz Hart wrote the lyrics to This Can't Be Love. Oh. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> um, I don't think Nat King Cole first recorded it, because it's, a, it's quite an old song. Um, I'm thinking 30s. But... Um, I would sing this song and I would learn all the solos. So on that record, everyone gets like eight bars or 16 bars. And it must have sounded weird because I would just sing it as if it was one solo, but one every person. eight bars I'd be doing a different thing. Hi, Fabian, nice to see you. And he, he says Richard Rogers, Rogers and Hart. Thank you. Oh, that's a Rogers and Hart song. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you remember that this was really your favorite song for Clark. You and Clark loved this song that I would sing it. Yeah. And uh, you commissioned one of your students to write my very first custom big band chart. You, you sang this with the Clark Terry Institute Big Band, mm -hmm. which was all students mm -hmm. when you were in middle school. No, you were in grade school. I was in grade school. Oh, uh, you were in grade school. I was in like fifth grade. <laughs> um, yeah. And Red Holloway coached you in the rehearsal. Yeah. It was quite amusing. It was amusing. Um, we're going to continue with Dinah. We've done a lot of um, songs, like American Songbook and pop, American pop tunes. But, of course, 
she is known as Queen of the Blues. I'm going to show you. This is, there are two biographies on her. This is the first one by Jim Haskins. It's older and it's good. Not as good as the new one by Nadine Cajotas, uh, but it actually has a complete discography in it that's really great. And this is a good photo of her, one of her press photos, Queen of the Blues. I'm going to show it up there to YouTube. And uh, we're going to play. Well, now, one second. But I was bragging about Ellington having his own train cars. Mm. How did Dinah get around? Uh, this is interesting. So Dinah was actually quite a superstar. She had many hit records, uh, blues records, and then pop records throughout the 50s. And she was one of the first female entertainers to own her own aeroplane. Like Ray Charles style. She was friends with Ray Charles. Actually, we have some great photos with Ray Charles, but they're they're kind of blurry and they're hard mm -hmm. to see. Um, but yes, she had her own plane. She loved furs um, and jewels and to dress up. And I do sort of think that I have a, a bit of a fashion sense like her in that sometimes we look really super glamorous and great and sometimes a little bit odd. Um, like if you watch her, if you watch the new, the famous Newport video where she sings All of Me, mm -hmm. she's wearing a dress that's like an egg. It's white uh, and it looks like an egg. So, but she thought it was great. So for that day, it was great. And sometimes you just have to have fun and it's more, um, more better to have fun. Uh, but we're going to sing this. This is in Evil Gal Blues. She's super famous for, but I wanted to do a little bit of a different one. This is also written by Leonard Feather and it's. Blow top blues. And I'm sorry to say, I, I know the words pretty well, but I just want to have them there. We deep flat. Five flats.
would rock it on my feet, talking out of my head. blues but it seems too uh close maybe too close to home too early <laughs> too, too soon as they say too soon um so dinah so i was telling you about this book interestingly blow top blues she recorded twice uh first time in 1945 so she would have been just 20 or 21 years old with lionel hampton and um leonard feather who wrote the blues wasn't super happy with her performance because he thought it wasn't quite bluesy enough. And it's interesting, if you listen to those 40s recordings of Dinah, she really sounds young. And I think you can hear a lot more Billie Holiday in her voice. And um, then she recorded it again, was it 51? 51. Um, with her own band on Mercury. And that's, uh, if you look online, that's called New Blow Top Blues, but it's the same song. And uh, she sounds different. I think in the 50s, she starts to get more of her... Um, Sassiness. It's odd because Sarah Vaughan is sassy, but I think Dinah is the one who sounds sassy. It's really sassy, yeah. Um, but I was going to show you guys a couple more pictures out of this book because this is the book I read when I was a little girl, and these um, photo oh, posted. These photos actually inspired my clothing choices a lot. So check out this awesome suit and matching hat. How brilliant is that? And. Um, this, to me, was the height of glamour, this photo shoot here um, with the fur. And if you have my album, After Dark, Oh, I love we, the fur. Where's the fur? Let the me see. The fur's here. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, if you have album, um, my album, After Dark, we tried to sort of duplicate, uh, not duplicate, but I wanted to pay homage. The music, of course, is Dinah, but we also wanted to pay homage on the cover. And I hope you can see this. It's in glass, so there's a lot of glare. But you can see that's, ooh, that's me in the fur, and uh, this record is the music of Dinah Washington. We should do something from that right now. Bad Case of the Blues? And we're going to do Bad Case of the Blues, because that's what Stephen wants to do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bad Case of the Blues.
too loud on the on this this platform we might try it one day though the flugel horn yes the flugel horn it's kind of it's funny because they can see it where is it <laughs> it's over there in the camera oh that's one of them that's there. one that's one of them he doesn't want to i did play the flugel horn last night out in uh new jersey yeah i think that's why they're asking it was fun too because um, we were able to be loud and everything so um I want to show you guys a photo of very, very young Dinah. This is in 1945 with Lionel Hampton. I like to imagine that this dress is gold, but I don't know the color of it. Um, the other thing that's interesting, even though Dinah was such a star, because she passed away in the early 60s, I feel like the photos and video footage of her really is um, finite. Like there's what we have is what we have, as opposed to artists who lived later, there's always more stuff coming out. Um, but she's more like Billie Holiday in that if you if you really have researched her, you've seen all the photos and all the video that exists. This is her in 1945 with Lionel Hampton. Now, was Lionel Hampton her first big major gig? Yeah, that's her first big major gig. That's why I'm showing it. Lionel Hampton. And she was such a star. I, used, I love this photo of her with them. Um, Hi, Tomomi. Good to see you. Uh, this is, there she is signing autographs. She's in the middle in the fur. Yeah, young. I mean, because I wanted to, you know, be a jazz singer. And I, I was like, oh, well, she's young and I'm young. I can do it. Right? No, I mean, that was the yeah, truth. I right. thought, you know, she sort of made it. And I was like, I, I will too. Oh, here's a photo of that egg dress. I don't know if you guys can tell. It is weird. Right there. Very strange. But it was custom made. Um, by the 60s, she was having her dresses custom made and her furs. How many husbands did she have, Stephen? Wasn't she married like uh, four or five times? I think seven. Seven times? Mm -hmm. And she passed away. She was 39. So do the math. <laughs> now, one of her earliest husbands just passed away. Yeah, Jimmy Cobb, I believe, was her second or third husband. Uh -huh. He did just pass away. The book I was just using to show you, I lost the dust jacket too, but it's called Queen by Nadine Cajodas. It's a fantastic biography about Dinah, really informative and accurate, whereas the previous one is a little more mythical. Mm. Well, we should play. Everything I want to play is uh, kind of the similar tempo. So Dave asked for a lover come back to me, which is on Dinah Jams, and I think we should do it. <laughs> Oh, I should mention before, um, as we get kind of closer to the end of the hour, thank you guys so much for being here and um, for joining me. And so many of you are here every week. It's really, I really appreciate it so much. Oh, Jim Duran says seven is correct. Jim. Seven. You're my man with the All facts. Right. I love it. Um, thank you so much to so many people who are here and so supportive every week. It means a lot. Um, we did have a live performance last night. 
Um, and hopefully we're going to have more, but probably not until September. So for the time being, this will be happening every Sunday, and I really appreciate all of your donations and your tips. We bought a new light this week. Stephen is brighter. Better lit. Yes, I'm much smarter. You're smarter, <laughs> no. But um, yes, she was born in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. That's right. Um, and I just want to say thank you. If you want to contribute, you can via PayPal or Venmo or Zelle. And actually, I have installed a new donate button on my own website on champion.net if you prefer to go directly uh, through Square. Well, some uh, people just, have been donating from the website. Right. So that's there, too. There's, there's lots of options. And I really appreciate you guys. And... Um, I, I don't know how to say, I've, I'm just going to be honest, you guys are my friends, I don't know how to say this, I know some of you have written and, and um, donated, you know, like $10 or $5, and you said, oh, you know, I'm sorry, it's not more, but that is wonderful, I appreciate it, no donation is too small, uh, and every, every little bit makes a difference, so thank you so much, and uh, we're going to play something fast for you guys right now. Did you want to say something? No, that's good. Sometimes I just talk so fast. <laughs> I remember every little thing you used to do. I grow lonely. Every road I walked along, I walked along with you. No wonder I am lonely. The sky was blue and high above. The moon was new and so was love. This aching heart of mine. Sky was blue, and I 
that song that I, um, when I was showing you the Milt Hinton photo, I wanted to say that Dinah was really protective and uh, she really wanted to take care of her band. And that in that story, Milt, um, often on her records, it's a studio band. It's not her band that she's on the road with. And so sometimes she would bring her band, her rhythm section particularly, into the studio and insist that they be on the session. But then maybe they weren't great readers. And so they couldn't play the charts. But she would get them on the payroll. Well, the producers had already hired other musicians to do that job. Right, but she would make sure that her guys would get in there, you know, and, and play. Yeah, that was the producer clapping. <laughs> and, uh, and make sure that they would play so that they would get paid. Well, one story I remember that I heard many times was, was it Wynton Kelly, I think? I don't know the story. It might have been. She brought him in and put him on the piano. Oh, yeah. And they said, no, 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 we have our own piano player for this day. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. She said, no, this is the piano player. Mm -hmm. He's my piano player. But they fought about it, and they fought about it, and they finally said, fine. Mm -hmm. They did. They took one tune, they took a take, and she fired Wynton Kelly. Because he couldn't read the chart. Right after the take. But they had still had to pay him for the session since he's since he recorded, you know, he was there. Right. So she got him paid, and he left, and the other guy came in, and then they did the rest. And she would also often have uh, catering for the session. And there was a restaurant in Chicago she really loved because she was living in Chicago. Oh, she also was living in New York, but um, she sometimes would have the food flown in for the New York session so that she could have the food she wanted. From Chicago. From Chicago. And I think that would just be so cool. Um, it sounds silly. I don't know. I just think it'd be really fun. And um, what she was would just, you, What would you have flown in? Uno's Pizza? Taro Humaro's. Oh, from Oklahoma. From Norman, Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that would be terrible food to eat. It would have to be after this session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, Lou, my friend Lou Donaldson, often talks about seeing Dinah. She loved to hang out in New York. She would come around to people's gigs. She would sit in. She would hang out. And um, she uh, would often, you know, like, buy the guys a round of drinks, or she was a very generous person. And she was a star, exactly. She was a star. So uh, that's really, apart from her music, why I love her so much. And we have so many more songs we wanted to get to today, so we're going to play a little bit longer. This one, I think we'd be really remiss not to do.
diversity of misery, of misery and joy. I'm feeling quite insane and young again, and all because I'm
in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Is that the same place Monty is born? I think so. And um, wonderful jazz singer who is, in my opinion, underrated today because I think uh, since she passed away in the early 60s, um, her, she was sort of uh, written out a little bit of jazz history. We hear all the time about Ella and Sarah Vaughan and Billie Holiday, and we don't hear a lot about Dinah. Uh, she was a crossover artist. She had many pop hits. R&B hits, like TV is the thing this year. Jukebox. Jukebox hits. She was a star. She's my favorite. I hope that you enjoyed um, sort of thinking about her and reminiscing about her today. Oh, thank you so much, Lawrence. Yeah, you guys, um, records are um, for sale on my website. You can, of course, you can stream anything, but if you want a signed copy, I go to the post office, usually on Tuesdays, and... 
I will send you one super sort of secret. It's not really secret. The record comes out August 28th, but it's on the website now. This? Oh, that was a very ominous note, Stephen. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yes, this is the new record birth song, and uh, we're starting to promote it this Tuesday, um, which means we'll be getting, well, hopefully, getting reviews and getting on the radio. But um, it's up there, and it'll be out on streaming sites August 28th. Yeah, see, I think people just don't think of Dinah in the jazz, um, in the jazz legacy, or um, in the jazz. I was gonna say lexicon. That's not the right. She one. had so many rhythm and blues hits. Right, but she's. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I really think if you go on some streaming sites, the early stuff is beautiful. There's a reissue called Mellow Mama. That's the other thing that's a little hard about her music is because so many of it, so much of it was 45s. Um, that singles. They're singles, so they're reissued in these enormous box sets you know like I have the mosaic box set and the complete Columbia the complete Mercury the complete you know but you can find everything on live streaming and I thank you guys so much for being here and being with us and uh, supporting us and supporting me it means so much really it's been such a strange year and without you guys I would not be hanging in there like I am so thank you again we're gonna do our theme song also, thank you for the many compliments about our outfits today. They match perfectly. Perfect. <laughs> Not planned. Next week, is it your birthday, Stephen? Nah. I think next week is Stephen's birthday. Nah, I don't think so. And we're going to celebrate it um, by doing the theme for next week. I was thinking we could do some Clark Terry originals. Old people don't have birthdays. Are you old? Old. Why? <laughs> I have no I got to think quicker on my feet next time for that response. Look for the silver lining Whenever clouds appear in the blue Remember somewhere the sun is shining So the right thing to do is make it shine for you A heart full of joy She's right here. I think she wants to say she liked it. Say bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Love I'm you. I'm on the wrong side. I'm on the wrong side. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. -bye. bye. bye.